Some of these questions you're about to see are actually super easy, but some of them will try to trick you. So go ahead and pause the video before each question and try it on your own first. See if you can figure out which is which. If you've got your formulas memorized, you see 30, 60, 90, and you're automatically thinking about the rules. Those rules being that your short leg is going to be X, your hypotenuse is going to be 2X, and your long leg is going to be X times the square root of 3. Well, heck man, if we have 6 root 3 right here, and X equals 6, that would all line up, right? 6 root 3, 6, and then 2X would be 12. 12 and 6 is 18, so that totally works, and our answer for this one, since we're asked about the longest side of the triangle, is going to be 12. If you rush through this one, you might see 3x minus 8, and you think, well, to get to plus 8, I just add 8. And you're like, 7 plus 8 is 13, even though it's actually 15, and you've got the wrong answer. Alternatively, you might think you need to subtract 8. Negative 1 is your wrong answer. But in fact, if you're going to get to plus 8 from negative 8, you would need to add 16. So 7 plus 16 is going to be 23, and that is the correct answer. And if you don't feel like doing any of that stuff in your head or even writing it down, yeah, man, you can always use Desmos. And you could do it like this using X, get your value for X, and then, you know, you have five. So then, you know, you could do like, I don't know, three times five plus eight. But what's really cool, I mean, it's going to give you your answer, right? But um, what's really cool is if you switch X to some sort of a variable, you could either say three A, instead of using equals, you use the tilde. Now, if you type in three A plus eight, it's going to just give you your answer because it's saved that value for A. If you have infinite solutions, it means we have literally the same equation. So if 6x matches with 6x, k matches with 5, and k equals 5. And you should absolutely have this memorized. Equations with infinite solutions have matching like values. In fact, we could take it further. If this said ax plus k equals 6x plus 5, we could also say with 100% certainty that a equals six just from this matching with this and what you need to know to make this one super easy is the exterior angle theorem which states that any exterior angle of a triangle such as x that is a an angle that's outside of the triangle kind of popping out of the triangle is going to be equal to the opposite interior angles so 70 plus 50 is 120, so our answer is 120. And just to reiterate that rule, if we had, I don't know, another line popping out over here, this angle, A, would be equal to this one and this one combined, right? If this kept going and we were talking about this angle, I don't know, we'll call it M, this would be equal to this angle and this angle combined. So again, that's the exterior angle theorem. Memorize it, super useful. And there's a couple rules on this one that I think make it super easy. The first is just knowing that a straight line like this is 180 degrees, which means if we subtract 110 from this, we're going to get this angle right here. So we know that that is 70. It's also telling us that these two angles are congruent. So this one's 70. And you better know that there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So if we subtract our 70 and 70, that's 140. We're left with only 40 degrees left for angle X there. This one is easy to miss if you're rushing because you say 15% of her eight hour workday. Cool, 15% of eight, you could say 0.15 times eight, and you could be like, oh, well man, eight times 15, that's 120, so it's 1.2. Or, hey man, I'm just gonna use Desmos real quick. 15% of eight is 1.2. And then you're like, cool, I got my answer, 1.2. But you're wrong because it's not asking you how many hours, it's asking you how many minutes. So how do you convert from hours to minutes? Multiply by 60. And then obviously 12 times six is 72. So 1.2 times 60 would also be 72. It's also the only answer that has a seven and a two sitting next to each other. So we're all good there. Using basic algebra is gonna make this actually really simple because instead of trying to solve for n and then plug it in, we can just solve for 2n minus one. So if I multiply this whole thing by five, I get 2n equals 50. So I already have my 2n, now I just need to subtract one from both sides. 2n minus one equals 49. 
Alternatively, if you wanted to use Desmos, you could just plug this in and you could use X instead of N if you want to use the vertical line method. And then you would have to plug that in basically 25 times two is 50 minus one is 49. Or if you're feeling really lazy, you could just put 2n over 5. Instead of an equal sign, use a tilde, and then it's going to give you the value of n. But more importantly, if you do 2n minus 1, it'll just give you the answer right here, 49. And the rule for this is basically the fractional exponent rule. So if I have x to the a over b, that is going to be the same as the b root of x to the a. And a really easy way to think about this is a square root. We know that, or at least you should know that, the square root of something, we'll say the square root of x, is the same as x to the 1 half, right? So if we put that in line with the rule here, we have x to the 1 half, that's our a over b, is equal to the square root, we know that a square root has an invisible 2 here, at least you should know, of x to the first power, right? And then anything to the first power is just itself. So if you can remember that x to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of x, it's easy to remember this x to the a over b. You can also imagine a beautiful flower sprouting out of the ground. And if this is our flower, and this is the roots of the flower, you remember the flower is the power, and the root is the root. So a couple of different ways of memorizing that. Anyway, regardless, our flower power is going to be x to the first power, which is the same as just x. And then uh, the root being 14 would be obviously choice B here. And the rule for this one is basically if you have an isosceles right triangle, that means you have a special right triangle, which is specifically a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Because isosceles means we have two matching angles and two matching sides. So you can already see I've got side, side, right? And then obviously, if you only have 180 degrees in a triangle, Subtract 90, you only have 90 left over, you split that into 45 and 45. This is on the reference sheet, so you don't have to memorize this, but I, I do recommend that you memorize it. And on that reference sheet, you will also see that the hypotenuse is gonna be one of the sides times the square root of two. And that's where this can get tricky, because if you see that square root of two, you might automatically be thinking to yourself, Oh, this is the rule. So if I have 94 plus 94 and square root of two, then my sides have to be 94, right? You don't wanna jump to conclusions though. Let's actually think about this and let's just think about what the perimeter would be. The perimeter would be all of the sides together, right? Side plus side plus side times the square root of two. Let's get lazy and plug that into Desmos. Side plus side plus side square root of two uh, remember, if we're using S instead of X, we have to use the tilde here instead of equals 94 plus 94 root 2. And now it gives us the value of S, which is what it's asking us. So we have this silly little number, so we know it's either going to be B or D. We put in choice B, 47 times the square root of 2. It is the same number. That is our answer, choice B. All right, so fastest way to solve this guy is to, first of all, look at sine of B is 5 over 13. So just remember sine, we, we want to remember SOHCAHTOA, SO being S-O-H, which means sine of something is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So in this case, sine of B would be the opposite, that's across the street from B, so C-A over here, over the hypotenuse, which is our longest side, uh, in this case, BA. And we're going to ignore that 26 for a second. Just remember that this is equivalent to 5 over 13. And if you see the number 5 and 13, that should ring a bell that this is a Pythagorean triple, a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So basically, if we wanted to, we could just kind of label this triangle all around as 5, 12, and 13. And then you're thinking, what the heck, dude? It's 26. Well, yeah, it's because this is our ratio, the whole thing is getting multiplied by two. So if this is 26, then this would actually be 24. This would actually be 10. Um, so BC is going to be 24. Now, if you were paying close attention during those problems, you probably noticed a theme. The SAT loves to hide little tricks in what seems like a simple problem. They're testing you not just on your ability to memorize formulas and plug in numbers, they're also testing your critical thinking skills. 
and critical thinking is exactly what you can build using today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive way to learn math, science, and logic that makes concepts click. Instead of sitting back while someone lectures at you, you're actively solving problems one step at a time. There's no endless cramming of notes or memorizing pages of equations. You just dive in, you follow your curiosity, and you let the lessons pull you along. The more you experiment with the ideas, the more they stick. I'm working through their visual algebra course right now, and I've gotta say it completely reframes the way that you think about algebra. You know the kind of math that makes up 70% of the SAT math section? You can start learning for free at brilliant.org slash penguin test prep or click the link in the description. And if you enjoy the platform, that link also gets you 20% off a premium annual subscription, which includes unlimited daily access to everything Brilliant has to offer.